Hey YouTube, so CVC here once again with another pickup video. As always, again, for the past three months, I've made about one, one video a month. Just because you know how life is. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Things need to get done. But, I do have quite a bit to show you, so let's go ahead and get started. First with the non-video game related items. Up on the right side, you'll see three Apple keyboards. The first one is a newer style aluminum keypad with a newer Eric pad USB connection. I've actually got two of these now. This one's the dirtiest of the two. But I like the Apple ones. One, I not only have an Apple computer, but they're more streamlined. And the USB connector is here on either side. So I have my flashcard reader on this side and then my mouse is on the right. But I did find also not only two of these, but I found this older wireless Bluetooth Apple keyboard. These don't have the USB on them. So it's just a keyboard. But that does work. I tested it out. And so does this one. This is the same exact style as the wireless one, but it does have the wired USB connector and the two USB on the back, as well as this one also came with the Apple mouse with the little trackball scrolling feature. Not their best mouse, but for the price they paid combined, great deal. From there, found another Kindle. Nice screen, no cracks, nothing. Everything works just fine. Went ahead and charged it. I already got a Kindle Fire, so I'll probably just try and sell this one. Picked up a Clip 2 by JBL. Little Bluetooth wireless speaker. Complete in the box. Um, might have been open, I'm not sure because the sticker's like off, so I'm pretty sure it might have been open, but I don't think it's really ever been taken out of the box. But still an easy flip. The best deal of the bunch for uh, flipping. Found this at a Savers. I had to take care of some business in San Jose just the other day. And on my way out of town, I ended up stopping by the Savers. And on my, on my way out, this was sitting on one of the end key, end, what are they called? The end caps right there on the very end on the aisle of the uh, shelving area. Just sitting there, but it's a Alpine PMD B200. Little portable... They call it their Blackbird GPS system. The unit's here inside this little pouch. There you go. The SD slot is here. It still has the generic fake SD card in it. The screen is very great condition. I'm thinking it might have been bought, but hardly ever used, because all the stuff is in here. So there's the unit. Little advertisement. Here's the wall charger. Still kind of tank wound up nicely. Again, like brand new condition on that. Here is the mount. That's connected to the cigarette lighter plug or the 12 volt. It's still wire tied. And again, really great condition, like it's never been used. I tested it out with the wall plug and this, and they both work just fine. Here is the windshield mount. Still has the little sticker on the center, just a little bit of dirt or something on the plastic part, the rubber part, but 
still nice and tight. And that just slips on the back of this and you just plug into your cigarette lighter. Also inside is a USB cable. This one has been taken out. You can see the wire tie there, it's not around the cable. But this is how you can connect your PC or any type of computer and get newer information. And then you got your little 3M mounting bracket. If you wanted to mount it to your dash, you can do that. And then you got your owner's manual on CD or DVD and more of your Blackbird navigation here on this disc as well. And it looks like some mounting screws for the uh, little disc here. So put all that back in there. But the cool thing about this unit is it has built-in Bluetooth, so if you're getting a phone call, it'll show and display everything here on the screen. If you want to load music, you can put it onto the SD card. It'll play music for you, also through Bluetooth, I believe. And then a cool thing, similar to Google Maps, how it updates you on traffic in your area, it has an FM band that it'll scan. It's a service that you, if this is new, it's a free trial built in, but if not, it's like a monthly service. I don't know if they still do it, but uh, it'll basically update you on traffic in your area and display on the screen, which is pretty cool. But yeah, pick that up for $14.99, and one of the last ones I've seen that sold was about $496, and it was just the, the unit a user manual, black and white one, and I think just the uh, the power adapters and the windshield mount. No discs, no box, and it was used, so, or they said new, but we'll see. So, like I said, quick flip, easy money there. I already got two Garmin's, and that's fine for me. I don't need another one. Alright, from there I got a few extra cameras to show you. As you know from my last video on the end, I am kind of into photography. So when I can find a great deal on a good camera, I will definitely pick one up. Or even some of the older ones like this Nikon I'll show you are still pretty good. But this one is a Konica Minolta. It's a damage, the D image, digital image. A200, but it's an 8 megapixel anti-shake feature, which is really great. But this one uses the old larger SD cards, or what's called, I guess, the CF flash card. So yeah, that's why I have my uh, flash card reader on the side of my keyboard, so I can just upload all the pictures from these larger ones all the way to like a micro SD. But this one, for the cameras that I have, is very, very good. Even though it's an 8 megapixel, it's very, very good. All the different uh, features and everything that it has, great camera. And it even had the charger and everything for it. Next up, in this pouch, from a local St. Vincent de Paul, the lady that was running the St. Vincent de Paul, the one that sold it to me, was the one that actually turned it in. This is her personal camera. This is a Sony CyberShot. It's an 8.1 megapixel with a 3 inch LCD monitor with 10 times opti optical zoom. Here's the screen back there. But another fairly decent camera. Not too bad. I prefer the Minolta better than the Sony, um, just with me taking some practice shots. The clarity and features of this definitely outsurpass the one here. But this is a full HD 1080, it's just real tricky on getting the right shot. So 
So, picked it up. It was only like five bucks with the bag and all the chargers and everything for it. So, nice little pickup. And last, well, not the last camera, but normal style camera. We got a Nikon Cool Pix 4300. Another nice little quick shot. Again, with the CF memory card. But all in all, when I tested it, again, really great picture quality for the price. So I'm very happy with this one. Just as like a, I don't know, just like as a, even a display piece. It's a really nice camera, but just to take like quick snapshots around the house or of, you know, people like close ups, really good. And last but not least, here in the back, in this Pelican case, uh, a few of my friends I'm on, my YouTube buddies, they already know what this is. They've seen pictures of it already in text message. But I picked this up for $25, everything in here, including the little tripod and harness. And if you don't read that, You'll find out real quick what it is, but nice Pelican waterproof, really impact proof case. We have a GoPro Hero 3 Plus. A little more for wear on the case, but the camera is in perfect condition. And the reason why I know that is because this came from my son. He's a real live -ish phot photographer, takes great shots. Um, he's looking to get rid of it. And I was in the market to buy one to kind of go along with the one that my wife gave me, the little Vivitar. But, yeah, it's got the little remote control for it. Dual battery charger. All the different mounts. Hardware. He did surfing. So he's got the little floaty device for if it ever fell off a surfboard. The little... Bobber, go pull like a little selfie stick for the water. All different backs. I know this one here with the holes on the back. That's for if you want audio to come in better. Otherwise, if you want full waterproof, you leave the one that's on there. But yeah, you even had the micro SD here that came with. I think it's like a 32 gig. But I got more. I can add to that. But. Really happy for that one, especially on the price, 25 bucks. There's a little bit more involved. I mean, it is my son, but there was some other stuff that my wife and I did. So it was kind of like a, as a thank you for what we've done. He's like, here, 25 bucks, you can have it. So really thankful for that. All right, that's it for non-video game related items. Let's cut and go to the video games. All right, let's go ahead and start with the uh, the consoles. Now, there is one console, a handheld one I'm going to wait till later for because it kind of ties in with the games because it came with some. These didn't come with any games. It's just the consoles. Uh, first up, we have a PS2 Fat, but this is the 39001. A model that you don't really see too often, but still holds its value among the different PS2 FAT systems. There's a 3001, there's a 5001, and then this is a 39001. Still a great console. Still does not have the uh, wireless remote control built in, so you have to have the adapter for it. But this one did not come with it, but it did come with a first party controller, first party memory card couple of stickers which I have to remove but it does have the power cable as well as the audio video both first party and the coolest feature on this particular one not just the price which is a great deal but the controller I believe is Pelican turn it on real quick just uh 
Pay attention real quick. There you go. This whole blue line that outlines the controller lights up blue. Let me turn the light off to let you see a little bit more of that. If I can. I got way too many lights on right now, but you can kind of see it from there. So great little feature on that particular particular controller. Um, I'm surprised that it's still working, and I just did a quick clean off with some uh, just a nice microfiber cloth and a little bit of rubbing out rubbing alcohol to get all the dirt and grime off, and it cleaned up really great. So I'll definitely be testing this out just to see how well it holds up against the PS to first party controller but it is a little bit smaller and I usually like the first party much better than the third parties but we'll see I'll do that on for now next up we have a GameCube I don't know if you want to call this platinum or silver whatever I don't care but uh came with the first party power adapter and audio video cables in the back and two GameCube controllers Just need again just to clean off a little bit of dirt and grime on these, but they are really Not too bad still work just fine No gain inside, but it is complete From there we got a Nintendo Wii This one's got the doors on top for the GameCube controller port and memory card slots it only came with a few items. It does have the power brick. But it did not come with the audio video cable. I do have an extra set of component uh, monster cable. As well as I think a Nintendo or a third party brand component cable. So you can get the high definition output without having to go to the HDMI conversion. So I'll probably package that with this one. But as you can see, the Wii sensor is still taped up around the cellophane, the little foam wrap, and zip tied. So this has never been used. And the console itself, minus the tape that was wrapped around to keep this stuff on it, is in really great condition. No mermaid card, but that's an easy fix. But really nice looking console and since it didn't have all the pieces as well as no no controller no nunchuck is less is like 14 bucks I think for the whole thing all right from there as you can see I got a, another ps3 this one came with two six acid six axes DualShock 3 controllers which both work it's just not hooked up right now, so it won't sink. But, same as the last one. Uh, 80 gig hard drive. I've already formatted it. And put my, uh, my username and everything on here. So I've been using this now for Blu-rays. and Haven't really played any games. I just use it to test them to make sure they work. But, uh. It's not the backwards compatible, it's just a two USB, like the other one that's sitting over there that I still have to fix. But I, I finally got stuff I need to fix that one, so that's going to be coming up. But this one came with not only the two controllers, but also everything you need to hook it up as well. It came with a uh, HDMI cord here. So it's a pretty cool HDMI cord. This one actually, you can go back and forth with it, as well as it kind of twists a little bit on the back here as well. Same on this side. So if it's like a really narrow place you need to get to, you can really work your magic and get this in there. So that's pretty cool. Then you got the regular Sony audio video cables which I might use for a old PS1 or PS2 system I need it for and just use HDMI on that 
Uh, the power cord I'm using is still plugged into my TV out there in the living room. But it did also come with the charger, the wall charger, and the base charger for the PlayStation earphone or Bluetooth headset. Just pull it up, plug it in to charge it, and just plug your uh, charger right there on the bottom, plug it into the wall, charge it up. So. I'm not sure how good these are, but the fact that it was in there was pretty cool. I did charge it, it should work. I might just use this for uh, maybe my phone or something. But that's it for the uh, major consoles. Let me go ahead and uh, Clean all this up, and I'll move everything else down for the games. Alright, let's go ahead and start with the, uh... Well... Actually, backtrack. A few other... To go with the consoles, I guess we're going to go with the handhelds and other features. I did want to show you this. Had to pick up the little thermal take. It's like a thermal grease or thermal compound. Which I'm going to need to fix my other, other PS3. You have to put down just a little bit. Spread it between this and the heat sink. That way it doesn't overheat. Which is the issue it's having now. So once I do that. That PS3 will work fine. And I'll have two working PS3s. From there. One of my local Goodwills had a. Nintendo 3DS XL. A uh, little aluminum armor case. Oh, it is aluminum. But it's the 25th anniversary of Mega Man edition from the San Diego Comic Con International. Two styli stylus or styli. We get the top and back covers. And it's brand new. So that's kind of cool. I don't have the, uh, the 3DS XL anymore. I have the new 3DS XL. So I'll probably just end up putting this online and flipping it. From there, this is the first I've ever seen in my area anyway, of the Mad Cat's blaster for the original Xbox. It's missing the breakaway cable that plugs directly into the console, but I have plenty of those, so this is going to be complete here shortly. But definitely needed for all the little shooters like House of Dead 3 and so on so but you need a CRT TV to work that with the old school kind you can't use it with a flat screen unless it's a flat CRT screen but great to find that for less than five bucks and great to find these for only about two dollars each but because they are green tag they were half off so a dollar each I have Two Wiimotes with the battery covers and one nunchuck. So that'd be cool to go ahead and package with the other we I just found. And all I need now is uh, I might go ahead and include my uh, my personal audio video cable, and I'll just keep my components because that HDMI converter does not <clears throat> don't do it. Just a great component cable. HDMI is a joke on the Wii. Alright. From there. Two original PS1 controllers. Uh, $5.99 for both. But a pretty good deal. Basically about $3 each. But the reason why I got it is because I already have the blue one. But I've never seen the green one. And they were both for the original PlayStation, not PlayStation 2. And this one, as long as it works fine, is easy 15, 16 bucks. And then this one maybe 12 or so. So quick flip. I don't need them. I just bought them because for six bucks, two controllers, easy flip. I made 
20 bucks. All right. So that's that. All right, on to the games. Found a couple of Dreamcast, uh, well, actually just one Dreamcast game. It came with the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater uh, manual and back cover art. I went ahead and replaced the disc case because the other one was just trashed. As you can see, I don't know if you can, but the manual is kind of warped like it was. It had gotten wet or something, and the pages were kind of sticky, but not too bad. So I was able to take them apart, and they were still 100% readable. They didn't rip or tear or anything. But what was in it was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And since I already had a copy loose of Tony Hawk Pro Skater, I put it in here and it just happened to be the All-Star Edition, so this is 100% complete. And you might be able to get a better view of the warpiness of the manual. So that's that. Save those for later. On the PC, we got FA18 Korea. Nice little flight sim for the Mac OS. Old school one. I was hoping I can download and play it on my Mac, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. But we also got Star Wars The Old Republic for the PC. That's complete. Great game. Whether you get this for like anything. But great game. And then Counter-Strike Source. Also includes Half-Life 2 Death Match Day of Defeat Source. But all the discs are in here. And the reference card is there. Looks like someone just put the security tape on the back of it. Take that off. There we go. Not bad. Nice little PC game. Still battling a cold, so sorry if I uh, pause and have to clear myself. Found this VHS. It's the Hot New 64, the Insider's Guide to N64. And this one, as you can see, has Donkey Kong, as well as, I think that's Perfect Dark, I want to say. Nope, Jet Force Gemini. So, you got Jet Force Gemini and DK64 on this particular VHS tape. A few screenshots of each of the games. And the cassette. There you go. By Rare. In really good condition. Might have to watch that, see what it looks like. Alright, first off, this was the Wii Sports that came with the Wii that I showed you earlier. So, at least it came with that and it pays for the $15. Uh, came also, or it didn't come with, but I found also a complete copy of MVP Baseball 2004. Pretty good condition. And then at the Salvation Army, which is now my go-to thrift store here in my area. Salvation Army is the bomb. That's where I got the PS3 for like 40 bucks, and it works just fine with all the other stuff. But they sell stuff. Most of the games are like five bucks, but I get a discount. And I'll show you or tell you what I paid for some of the other stuff later. But uh, we got Epic Mickey 2, Power of 2. This is complete. Really great condition. And so is the Hysteria Hospital Emergency Ward. Mickey looks kind of fun. This one, not too sure. <clears throat> Alright. Xbox. We got a copy of Juiced. Complete. Not too bad shape. This one I'm really happy to find. This is the original release of Halo. No seal of Game of the Year or anything. This is the first edition Copy. Black label. No platinum hits. 
the disc that came in it's kind of thrashed. But just to have the case and manual and everything is fine because the discs are the same from here to the other ones. It's just for some reason people like this case cover art more than the others. They want the first release, so happy to find that. Then we got full auto for 360 complete. Yeah, everything's in there. Bioshock Infinite. He has a season pass in there. And Grand Theft Auto V. This was from a yard sale. But you got two disc one install, install discs as well as a game disc. So, might have to test that out, make sure it works. The map looks like it's back there, kind of all scrunched up behind the manual. Yep, that's the map. All right. Set these out of the way. All right, on to the fun stuff. This later. Right now, let me get to this real quick. I did pick up a nice bag of comic books. Everything in here is Ghost Rider comics from like the 90s. Even came with a lot of the uh, little collector cards, training card set. But all in really great condition. So happy to find that. One of my favorite characters. Alright, uh... PS1, PS2, PS3. Got Triple Play Baseball. No manual, but everything else is in there. Found this. Actually got this with a few other stuff. Oh yeah, I found this with all this stuff over here. The carts. But we got Mega Man X5. We got the back cover art, but no manual. The disc has been... Has seen better days. It is kind of scuffed up. So I'll have to test it and make sure it works. But for the price I paid for everything. I wasn't going to leave that behind. Also got Harry Potter. And Sorcerer's Stone. Another easy game to sell on PS1. And then on PS3. We got Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Dragon Age Inquisition. Prince of Persia, another copy of Uncharted 3, I think this is my third or fourth one. They're just real easy to give away or trade to people. Dynasty Warrior 6, Saints Row 2, nice little foil cover. SSX, Street, NBA Street, Home Court. And a sealed copy of Lord of the Rings Aragorn's Quest. I don't think it's a real expensive game, but the fact that it is sealed is the reason why I picked it up. I figure I can probably get more for it that way than if it was opened. Uh, another sealed game for PSP. We got Final Fantasy Tactics, The War of the Lion. Greatest Hits version, but still not bad. And I actually picked this up for ten dollars i was debating whether or not to get it for that price if i wanted to keep it or try and flip it because the price is so f it fluctuates so much on this game so on average it's about 20 18 to 20 average all the time so i would still definitely get my money back if i were to sell it sealed as is or even if I sold it open, I would still get my money back. Because they, once they're open, they'd probably sell for around 10 So either way, I still would get my money back. So I might just open it and play it. We'll see. From there, found a Hitman Trilogy box set. Even it has the outside box. And inside you got Hitman Contracts, Silent Assassin, and Blood Money. 
Nice set right there. This is pretty cool. Uh, sealed copy of the Pinball Hall of Fame Goat League Collection. Then we got another copy of Final Fantasy X2. Complete. Easy sell with the uh, Final Fantasy X. Copy of Sonic Mega Collection Plus. Here we got another God of War. Sealed Atari Anthology. I guess they bought it somewhere with 10 bucks or whoever had it before, but the thrift store got it for less than two. Jack 3 for a PS2. Oops. What was that? I knew there was one in here. Yeah, there. It's MX versus ATV Untamed. So, free game in there. Not too bad. Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando, Greatest Hits. Another copy of Kingdom Hearts, Non Greatest Hits version. Complete. Not too bad a shape either. Then we got Juiced. And at a different store, Juiced 2. That's kind of cool. I like the racing games. Uh, this one was kind of neat at the Goodwill. You got Soul Calibur 2. Open this carefully because I know there's more than one disc in here. Yeah, there's a. Is it two DVD or two disc case? Here you got the manual for the game and the game itself. But then it also came with Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Yeah, I need to clean that up. And then Fantasy Star Universe. So, for $3, three games, not bad. Alright, move those back out of the way. Bring the other ones forward. And then we'll move on to the other stuff on the right. So... For original Nintendo system, we got Burger Time and Skate or Die. For Super Nintendo, we got NBA Jam Tournament Edition and a copy of Cool World, which is rising up in value, I think. I don't know. That's what I've heard. I really don't think it is. But uh, still a very kind of obscure title. And if you've ever seen the movie, very obscure movie. And then for Nintendo 64, we got Quake 2. And the next one still has a price ticker because I wanted you to know what I paid for if you didn't believe me. But it is a copy of StarCraft 64. Let's see if you can see that. $4.99. So yeah, the Salvation Army area. Everything's $4.99 when it comes to games. So Quake 2, StarCraft 64, and look at that label. Nicey. Just need to clean up a little bit, but very happy on that one. I know the Rebel Gaming guys, or Rebel Gaming Club, sorry, they found one of these recently. I commented that I, was, I also found it, making my video. But on their copy, they had this nice little sticker on the front. Unfortunately, they were not able to take it off without peeling off some of the stickers, so they decided to leave it on. Which is probably the best bet, because if you have a sticker on a sticker, especially these older ones, it doesn't really work out that well. But when it's on the side, all you got to do is... Take it off, take a little adhesive off, and you are now stickerless. So, never played it, as Real Gaming Club said. I'm just the same way. I prefer the PC version, but then again, I've never played the 64 version, so I would 
definitely give this a try to find out how it plays and let you know in another video what I think. Now, those along with the uh, Dreamcast game and the uh, Mega Man X5, like I said, they're normally $5 a game, but I got a discount. Everything, all six of these with the other two, was $21. So $21 out the door, done. Next up, I know this is long, but like I said, when you do once a month, it kind of gets a little tedious to do every week. But I did find at that same Salvation Army a Game Boy Color. And it does have the battery cover on the back. It's worn down a little bit here, but this back sticker here is just fine. Went ahead, tested it out, and it did work. And the game that was in it already was a copy of Pokemon Blue. And it works. The speaker, unfortunately... As always, not the best. There are mods you can put a new speaker in, but the fact that it does play, I'm very happy. And the battery still works, and it does save the game. Continue a new game. So, that's cool. So, that's the first game. I also found a few other games. These all came together in one buy, one bag. First up for Game Boy Advance, Madden 2004. Power Rangers Wild Force. And Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Then we got the original Star Wars for original Game Boy. Much better game than that one. Pac-Man from Namco, and then a copy of Pokemon Crystal, the official copy, does have the stamp, as well as the lettering, everything is fine, battery works, saves fine, so I already got a copy of this in my own personal collection, so this will be flipped, same with this and these, and I'll probably just package them with this for... Oh, easily a hundred bucks or more. And then last but not least, I did pick up a Sony PSP. In my last video, I think you guys saw my LCD screens I was going to use to fix two of my other PSPs. Those belong to my sons. Um, I was able to fix the 3000 model. The 2000 model ran into some issues and it was more work that needed to be done and I'm just like forget it so it's done it's gone got rid of it but I uh, found this one on eBay for a great deal it's from Japan it's a nice I don't know if you can see the uh, little color or anything in the white but it's that nice kind of like pearl with the different oh I don't want to say sparkles, but the nice glitter sparkling effect. Even on the back, you can get more. But it's just really, really nice in person. It does work 100%. But because it's a Japan PSP, doesn't mean it won't play games. Because as you know, PS3s, PSPs, the region lot, or not region lot, the region free. So, any game, any PSP game will play in here. Same with the PS3. Any game, whether it's PAL, Japanese, or American, will play on that as well. And then all I gotta do on this is just get this hooked up and I can play from my PS3 onto here. So that works.
and I had a 4 gig Sony memory card from another PS3 that I had prior that I no longer have. So I put that in now I got 4 gig instead of the 2 gig. Because that one didn't come with it, it just came with a battery. But I have the extra charger, everything works just fine. Alright, this is the last thing. Found the Nintendo DS little, I don't know what you call this, carrying case or just, it's just mint, mint. it's got that here, I got it for half off of 250 But it, it's cool because it has this little cutout here on the bottom. This is just a piece of rubber on the bottom with a slit in the middle. So you can run all your power cords through these holes here or here to charge. So if you have like two DS's or maybe like a PSP or something, you just run your power cords through here, up and through, and plug them in. You got slots up here for all your games. I would say maybe, maybe 20 looks like up here. Yeah, nice little display piece, I guess. I don't know. For the price. At least I can have something to put my PSP in and Game Boy or DS, 3DS, you name it. All right, that is it. That's everything. I'm done. Go ahead, like, comment, subscribe at the bottom if you're not already subscribed. Please do so. I do like to read all your comments at the bottom. I do read them all. I do try to reply as soon as possible. But uh, hopefully it won't be as long until my next video. It just depends on how much stuff I get between them. But uh, I currently am working on some issues right now in my personal life with family and the job I'm doing. And I'm actually thinking about doing a video about that. So maybe look for that in the next week or so. Um, I'm just trying to get more information about it so I can give a better understanding if I do make a video. So stay tuned for that. But until then, this is SoCVC. See ya.